morning, everybody. Nice to have the windows open and the air, air, and the air conditioning not on. So welcome to God's house. Today is the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. We welcome those of you who are watching online, and we invite you to follow along. I hope you have a bulletin and you can sing the songs and participate in the service. Our theme today is Receive the Kingdom of God Like a Little Child, and our text is uh, from Mark, where Jesus embraces and engage the little children. What else do you remember about that? He blesses them, but what else? He got irate toward whom? The disciples, yes, we forget that. So let us stand to sing op uh, the opening song, Gather Together, please stand. opening responses are printed out for you in your worship folder. We begin our time together this morning in the name of the God who has loved us with an everlasting love. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Impress these commandments I give you this day upon your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. As a father has compassion upon his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. Remember everlasting to everlasting. The Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. People were bringing babies and children to Jesus to have him touch them. But when the disciples saw this, they sent them away. But Jesus called the children to himself and said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Continue in what you have learned, because you know those from whom you learned it. From infancy you have known the Holy Bible, which is able to make you wise unto salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Together, dear Father in heaven, on this day we celebrate your work among us, calling us your dear children, young and old, to come to Jesus and to be blessed by him. So fill our hearts and voices with joy this day as we sing your praise. We sing the song of praise.
and let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we do gather together as your dear children. And dear Lord, we pray that you would continue to humble us, each of us. Humble us that we may know that the only way that we can receive the kingdom of heaven is to come to you in childlike fashion. And so, dear Lord, we pray for our children, our grandchildren. We pray for the children we know in this world. And we pray, dear Lord, that they may be brought to you at an early age to come to know you, dear Jesus, as their Lord and Savior who loves them. Bless our time together this day. In your name, dear Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please take time to greet those around you. And By the way, we are uh, going through the book of Acts in Bible study, and I want to invite those of you who haven't started yet to come. And one of the things we're learning in the uh, early church, they spent a lot of time together. You know why? Well, we had that discussion today. They were living in a hostile environment. Thank you very much. See, we have it so good but they were living in a hostile environment. So church today is gonna to last about two and a half hours. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna spend time together. It'll be time for private prayer, maybe some food. Uh, uh, you brought food, dinner, yes, and a movie. So, uh, okay. I'm serious though, uh, living in, uh, in a different world. So take out your Bibles, if you would, please, and turn to uh, page 968. There you will find Psalm 128, the psalm for the day. We're going to read this together, okay? And this is called a song of ascents, A-S-C-E-N-T, when you ascend, okay? So the Jewish pilgrims sang these psalms when they ascended the mount to go up to Jerusalem. Remember, Jerusalem was high up. So as they journeyed for the festivals, they would sing a cappella these songs, these psalms called the Songs of Ascents. So let us read together this psalm, which fits the theme very well for the day. Psalm 128, please join me. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor Blessings and prosperity will be yours. <coughs> your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your sons will be like olive shoots around your table. Thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem. Live to see. Peace be upon Israel. This is the word of our Lord. Now turn to page 1570, where you will find Mark chapter 10, 1570. Okay? So we are back in the Gospel of Mark. I love the Gospels. Um, just to go through the life of, and ministry of Jesus is always a, a wonderful thing. And Jesus and his disciples are on the eastern side of the Jordan River. 
and they are in the last weeks, the final weeks, before his final trip to Jerusalem. If you turn the page, you'll see the Palm Sunday was coming up shortly. So they're in the final weeks. And if you look at the page that we're on, page 1570, you'll see the chapter begins with Jesus teaching on marriage and divorce, all right? And that is followed by our verses for today on little children, which we're going to go through in a minute. But then it's followed by the rich young man. And these go together, our text and the rich young man. What does the rich young man ask Jesus? What must I do to inherit eternal life? And in our text for today, we have an answer to that. Okay? All right, so let us, let's read it together. Not too quickly, okay? Not too quickly. Join me, verse 13. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have them touch him. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Come to me. Do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. He took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. So keep your Bibles open, okay? So notice it says people were bringing children to Jesus to have him touch them. You see the picture behind us? Okay. We chose that picture purposely for several reasons. First of all, it, uh, this episode is that this was a unending parade. It wasn't like five, ten kids. It wasn't 5,000, as someone said. But it was a long parade of parents with their children, okay, coming up to Jesus to have him touch them. Now, why would they do that? Well, they would do that because that was a tradition in Jewish life. It goes all the way back to the patriarchs, that you would take your children to a rabbi when a rabbi would be there, and you would take that. It was kind of sort of a dedication of the child, and a blessing, of course, and he would touch them and bless them. And it was thought by many that even just a little touch by the rabbi was a blessing on the child. Now, if you look at the picture, who do you see in the picture? And I, this is interesting that this picture has, is the way it is. You see children, and you see... Well, okay, all right, you see Jesus. You see men. You see fathers. Okay? Most of us, I think, would say, well, the mothers brought them. Not necessarily true. In Jewish culture, it was the father who was responsible for the child's spiritual development and welfare. So basically, the best guess is many of the fathers and mothers, but the men, the fathers, were bringing their children. Now, what, what, and when you think of this picture, this painting, what were the age of the children? Don't look at that one. Look at me for a moment. What were the age of the children? Little toddlers, right? Generally, toddlers, 10? Really? Wow. Most of us, who you see, every painting I have is, they're all what? Real little children. Some are infants, some are toddlers. Actually, the age ran from infancy to about 12 years old before they became adults in Jewish culture. And if you look at this picture, you will see some of the boys are older, aren't they? Yeah. They're older. They're 10 to 12 years old. So it wasn't just cute little babies that were coming. It was children, and this becomes important at the end of the sermon. You will find out something out that is amazing, all right? So parents are bringing them this long line, all right? So that's verse 13, and look at the end of 13. But the disciples rebuked them. By the way, that's a strong word. They didn't say, you know, it's getting late. Could you just go home? This is how they worded it. Would you get out of here and take your kids with you? That's how it really was. 
But, you know, we sanitize the people in the Bible, don't we? Don't you like that word? You know, we sanitize them. They're all there. No, nah, disciples. Now, why were they so bothered? This is the great question. What is so bothersome? Was it that the kids were a nuisance? Or they just kept coming and coming? And the noise. You know how children can become at times. And were they just bothered and tired? Maybe they didn't get a good night's sleep. Maybe they were just, they didn't want to be around kids anymore. You ever have that moment in your life? I know teachers have those moments in their lives. That what, whatever it was. And they're seen as disruptive. And I, the best guess is they took control of the situation. It seemed to be out of control. And what was the control? Take your kids and go home. We've had enough. Now, do you think if Nicodemus and the Jewish leadership was around, they would have done the same thing? Probably not. But the disciples rebuked them. It isn't like, oh, would you please go home? Notice the next verse. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. I love that word, indignant. It's only used 11 times in the New Testament, and it means Jesus was irate. He wasn't a little bit upset. He was foaming at the mouth, angry with the disciples. He will, you could feel, see, we don't think of Jesus that way, do we? He is just full of anger. He is irate. You could hear it in his voice. You could feel, see it in his face, and you can feel it because the disciples are total idiots in this. They have no clue what they're doing by just dismissing those children to go home. Look at verse 14. Look at what he says. There's two imperatives there. And I don't, our translation is so milk toast. Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. What that is is you let those little children come to me and don't you ever again ever keep them away from me. Does that sound a little different? I think so. Not happy. Two imperatives. You let them and don't you ever stop. Think they got the message? I think they did. Verse 15 is key. We're coming to that in a moment. Look at verse 16. Thank goodness it ends well, doesn't it? How does it end? Look at verse 16. It ends with the children hanging on them, Jesus hugging them, touching them, blessing them. It's a wonderful scene, isn't it? One of the great joys in ministry is when you get to bless children as a pastor. When you actually get on your knees, and it's been a while it's because we're so afraid to do that now. When you can get down to their level, look them in the eye, give them a hug, hurt them, a, you know, make it, yeah, I gotta get out, you know, I gotta get out. And that's a great joy to bless children, to put your hand on them. I gotta tell you a little story. We talked about this in Bible class today. I say, Jesus, bless you. A lot of people say, well, God bless you. I do that purposely. My father would do that when the children in the school walked out of chapel and they'd walk down the line. And he, my dad was not really formal, but he would shake each hand. And every child, he would say, Jesus, bless you. And I don't know, somewhere in my ministry, in my life, I just picked that up. So I invite you to do that. Say, Jesus. by the way, we talked about this in Bible class. Try Jesus bless you out there on the street and see what happens. Seriously. All right. Part two, verse 15. No one, and I mean no one, will enter the kingdom of God unless he or she becomes like a little child. Now let that sink in, people. No one, I mean no one, 
not the Queen of England, not the King of Israel, no one, no one, male or female, will enter the kingdom of God unless he or she becomes like a little child. You gotta be kidding me. That makes no sense from a human point of view. What do you mean I gotta become like a child? Remember when your children were little? They'd say, Daddy, Mommy. They'd say, would you hold me? Would you help me, Mommy, Daddy, right? That's when they were good. Or if they were scared, what they do, what would they do? They'd come running to you, right? When there was a noise, and they'd want you to hold them because what? They felt safe in your arm. There's a lot of things in this. Become childlike. I got a bunch of them. Well, first of all, it includes humility. It includes the ability to put your life into the hands of someone else. That means you're not in control. It means the ability to trust, put your life in someone's hands. It includes a sense of, we don't like this, helplessness. It includes a sense of helplessness and dependency, okay? And we don't like that as, as human beings, right? No. We're, we're too big for that. I don't need your help anymore. Remember when your kids said that? I don't need your help anymore, mommy and daddy, until they got to be about 18 or 20 years old, and then they realized, well, could I have some money, please? <laughs> could I have some money? Help, help me up. The reality is, we as human beings, we want to be self, self-contained. We want to be self-sufficient, right? We pride ourselves. I can do this, and I can do that. I can take care of myself. And to a great degree, that's a great thing, isn't it? I mean, I don't want my kid taking care, me taking care of my child till he's 90 years old. And the reality is it's a good thing. But Jesus is talking about what? Entering the kingdom of God. All that stuff that you and I are good at, all our self-sufficiency, Everything about us out of which we're so proud will help you not one iota to enter the kingdom of God. You have to become like a little child that says, Daddy, help me. Now that's a picture, isn't it? Because only your Father in heaven can bring you into his kingdom through his son, Jesus Christ. It's not because you're so smart. It's not because you and I are such good people and nice people. It is because our Lord Jesus comes to you and me as adults. And what does he want to do with us? He wants to touch us, put his arms around us, and bless us with the forgiveness of sins and the gift of eternal life. Do you notice the gospel in this episode? The children come to Jesus for a blessing. You and I, whether we're children or adults, we need to become childlike. And what does that mean? What does it mean? We need to come to Jesus, right? And we need to come to Jesus like a little child, not an arrogant pain in the neck who knows everything, a self-sufficient, but a child who says, dear Jesus, would you bless me with the forgiveness of sins and eternal life? Now you understand the scene? It's a powerful gospel scene. It is just powerful. And I want to say to you as I get older, and maybe I'm getting more observant, or maybe, I don't know, but you can tell the arrogance of people. They have no time for the things of God, right? Because they're too busy with being an adult, and taking care of themselves. There's no way they're going to humble themselves and get on their knees like a little child 
and say, Jesus, help me and bless me. Right? You got any people like that? In the, did you know? I see them. And their life shows it. They have no time for the things of God. No humbling. They wouldn't think of getting on their knees and saying, Jesus, forgive me. Help me. That's not who they are. And that people of God is so sad. Come to Jesus like a little child. So many will not come because they will not become like a little child. Because Jesus is the only one who is able to take you and me into the kingdom of God. Everybody understand that? And thank God if, you, if that's happened to you. Thank God. And if you have people around you who are arrogant, you're probably not going to be able to convince them. Okay? You're probably not. I, I don't know what to say to you. And it's, you can tell the difference. By the way, Rock of Ages, verse 3. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Part three of the sermon, what do we learn? Well, last week I preached on persistence in prayer. Remember that? Maybe you don't. And suffering through hardships. Every one of us ought to thank, get on our knees. You're not going to like to hear this. Every one of us ought to get on our knees and praise and thank God for the sufferings in our lives. I sound like an idiot, don't I? I do. Thank God you and I have suffered in life. You know why? Because those sufferings have made us childlike. Do you understand that? Just think how arrogant you and I would be if we had no sufferings. But because of whatever sufferings, trials, whether they're physical, mental, emotional, uh, uh, economic, whatever, you and I are what? Driven back to become like a little child. And in those times, what do you pray? Dear Jesus, help me. That's a childlike prayer. And instead of crabbing and complaining about all the trials and sufferings you've been through or are going through, maybe we ought to stand up and praise God because through those he's kept us childlike. Think about how crazy that is. I'm sure I sound like an idiot to people looking on, out in the world. But for those who believe, they understand that. Secondly, don't be like the disciples. <laughs> okay? Encourage and let the children come to Jesus. And encourage children's ministry. I know children can be irritating at times, but so can adults, let me just tell you. You might know that may be a surprise to any, some of you, but it is. But don't be like the disciples. Encourage children's ministries. That's why our ministry to children and families is important. And I, and I just lament what's happened with so many families with this COVID, how families have just been removed from the church and fellowship. It's been terrible. And our preschool, thank God we have the preschool. And for the Christian preschools around where Jesus is shared, can you imagine being a Christian preschool and not tell, teach children about Jesus? I know of one. They're a, they're a Christian preschool in a church, and their attitude is, well, we're not here to teach the children about Jesus. Lightning ought to come down from heaven and burn that place down. Think about that. Think about that. So, now I have to tell you, remember I told you there was something about the age of four, uh, infants to 12-year-olds? Uh, I went on the Internet this week. It was not exciting, but I went to the Barna Research site. Between the ages of 4 and 14, 
between the ages of 4 and 14, a majority of people have come to receive Jesus as their Savior. Guess what the majority is? Percentage. Oh, here, yeah, come on. Anybody want to guess? 60, good guess. Eighty-five percent. What Jesus said 2,000 years ago is still the reality of today. Isn't that amazing? And those who are the most highly committed are those who came to the Lord Jesus as young children. So my last word for today is this. And for those of you, any of you watching, parents out there and others, let the Lord Jesus Christ come into your children's lives early on. Let me just say this. So many parents, and I, I say this with pain and anger, are robbing and stealing their children of the grace of God through Jesus Christ. That's it, folks. What else do you want to call it? If there's no Jesus in their life and you as a parent aren't giving that to them and allowing that to be and giving that, letting, introducing them to Jesus, what are you doing? You're robbing and stealing from your children the grace of God. That's a tragedy. Oh my God, that is a tragedy need to pray for those people. We need to pray for God to open their hearts and change things in their lives. And if you were raised in a family where you were brought to Jesus, you thank God for that and praise him. In Jesus' name, amen. We will continue with the offering of our gifts and tithes to the Lord Jesus. And uh, are the girls going to take the offering? Okay. And uh, then when the prayers, Lord's Prayer and the Sacrament of Holy Communion. Please take out your uh, insert from your bulletin. And um, you'll notice all of the folks um, listed there. We want to keep the McGuire family in our prayers. And uh, also want to add a man by the name of Sherman uh, to our prayers. He is battling cancer. Uh, but I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray for whoever you wish to pray for on this list, okay? So you have been seat seated for a while. Why don't you stand for the prayers, if you wish. Dear Father in heaven, on this day, as we focus on the necessity of a childlike character to come into the kingdom of heaven, 
Dear Lord, today we pray for the children of our country, the children of our community, the children of our world. And we pray, dear Lord, that they may come to know Jesus. Dear Lord, first of all, please forgive us for the atrocities that are tormented against the children of the world, for the millions of children who don't even get a chance to be born, but are killed before they are even born. We pray, dear Lord, for the children around the world who suffer in poverty or suffer because of tyrants who rage against them and their parents. And so, dear Lord, again, forgive us for the tragedy of the loss of the family unit in this culture to a great degree, that so many have gone away from the importance of family. Dear Lord, help us to give us a revival. Revive families, dear Lord, to have strong family ties, for mothers and fathers to care for their children, and not just physically, but to bring them also to Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Today, dear Father, we take time to raise our personal and private prayers for people we know, either on this prayer list or not, who need our prayers. Please pray privately. Lord, in your mercy, we also pray this day, dear Father, for those families who are dealing with the death of loved ones. Dear Lord, surround them with your peace and your grace and presence, and be with them through these times of loss. And may these times of loss, in times of suffering, be times, dear Lord, that you use to humble us and to, make, to bring us to be like children again who need your power, your presence, and peace in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. And together, dear Father, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for the remission of all your sins. And the peace of our Lord be with you always. Amen. Thank you. We're going to continue with the sacrament. There are two songs to be sung. We'll let the band go first. You may be seated. Elizabeth, the blood of our Lord
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Spirit bless you this day and continue to empower you and me to be childlike in regards to our Father in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. A couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, the uh, LWML is auctioning a quilt to help cover the costs of the quilts they will ship uh, around the world. And by the way, two weeks from today, the pews will be filled with the quilts, so you have to be here. They're beautiful. They are filling the cabinets in the parish hall, so it's wonderful. Thank you, ladies, who's been involved in that. Um, also, this coming Friday is Senior Day, and I want to invite you to come. If you're over 60, you're a senior. I hate to break the news to you. But you are, and you're welcome to come. It starts about 10 o'clock, 10.15. We're going to have uh, music, right, Deb? We're going to have sing-along with Deb. And uh, we have a speaker on, um, oh, not on memory care. We have a speaker <laughs> on, on Medicare. And uh, then we're going to have lunch, and uh, Allison's going to give us some games, right, Al? And uh, we'll see what that is if you want to stay, okay? So anyway, uh, sign up for that. I have, we have about 30 coming. Isn't that great? You're not a senior yet, are you? A couple of years? A couple. All right, anyway. Um, are we done? I think so. Let's sing the closing song, which is You Are Holy. This is the uh, from the... Uh, Youth gathering, right? Yes. By the way, we sang a song by uh, Don McGinnis. It's nice to sing one of his songs again. Thank you if you're watching, Don.
of peace and I will live my life for you. You're my prince of peace and I will live my life for you. That's quite a song. Have a good week, everybody, and Jesus bless you. Peace and I will.